Hey everybody, most of you know for me exploring abandoned buildings and I'm going to continue to do that. But as an educator, I like to do research. I like to read and I like to learn and discover. And so I want to make a few videos of those discoveries. And sometimes I meet people through YouTube that share interests and likes. And so I basically make these videos because one, it's good for me to uh, express uh, the things that I've seen and heard and smelled and used my five senses for, right? And then uh, it's also good to look back on these videos and see growth. And so anyway, just want to get into the video. I'm only going to make probably one video. We'll see how it does and then I may continue. I read something over the course of the last six months that really interested me. It's antitrust laws. Basically, that's when the government either interferes or intervenes, we'll let you determine that, in the marketplace, the market where there's competitors fighting for your hard-earned dollars. You're the consumer, okay? And so when the antitrust laws are to defend against a company becoming a monopoly. A monopoly is when one company owns the whole market or the 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 majority of the market. Now the marketplace, let's say there's there's all kinds of markets. Video game. The video game industry has a market, okay? And basically the three biggest are Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. They're in the market. So when we say uh, retailers like Walmart and GameStop, that's not the video game market. The, the, the video game market is the ones who produce the games and stuff. So uh, just simplistically, I wanted to give that example. But here's what started me on this journey, in this video, and this study. And I'll, I'll sort my site, site uh, sources in the description below. Um, when I read something about Budweiser and the government um, charged him with, 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 with um, the fear of being a monopoly, antitrust lawsuit. Microsoft, very interesting article. I'm going to get to all that. Uh, like Budweiser, Microsoft, even Walmart was a part of that. And then for you old timers, Morton Salt Company, the A&P grocery, grocery chain, and Standard Oil were all charged with, uh, with antitrust lawsuits and were pr prosecuted. And like, that's a big deal when the, like, in my first four years of study of economics, I took a, a, a different train of thought than I do now. And so my eyes have been open to some ideas. But before I buy into those ideas and start preaching and teaching to others, this is an exploratory video. This is not for me to uh, put my opinion on you and to shift your beliefs. They're just like to open up a discussion because there could be someone watching this and say, hey, Thomas, you're wrong. Da, 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 this, need to read this, or you, let me tell you about this. So if we do things in a professional manner, my ears are open to what you got to say. All right, really quickly, I want to get into this. Antitrust laws, what are they? Now, I first, we need to, to, to uh, talk about the original intent of what antitrust lawsuits are supposed to have done, and then act, what do they actually do from looking at it through the history of all of these lawsuits. The original intent was to keep one uh, business in the market from eliminating the other people in the market, the other businesses, and then artificially inflating their prices because they're the only company that sells the product. Now there are, here, here's an interesting, it's rare that you see a company do that. Yet, the government pursues some of these companies like vicious wolves, okay? All right, before I go on, I just want to put this up on the board here, okay? Because sometimes it's better to read it. And this is the basic rationale for antitrust laws. To prevent monopoly and other non-competitive conditions which allow prices to rise above where they could be in a free and competitive marketplace. Okay, so how does an antitrust lawsuit get started? It's usually from one competitor complaining about another competitor's prices. So basically, let's say Nintendo would go 
to the U.S. government and say, hey, Sony, uh, Sony PlayStation is charging $10 less per game. I can't compete with that because it costs me so much to make a game and then I have to make a profit and pay all my employees. They're going to run me out of business and then you're going to have a problem with that. Okay? And so then the government goes in and investigates. And, and so that's basically how I get started. Because the U.S. government is... The government's supposed to be we the people. So the government's supposed to look out for its people, okay? Once again, keep in mind, I'm going to ask you to type one simple word into this video if you have time for nothing else. And that is intervention or interference. Do you think that the government, when they uh, prosecute a company, are they interfering into the economy or are they inter? Intervene. Intervene means they're obviously a third party between two competitors, okay? And what we're trying to find out today, is it a good thing or is it a negative thing that the government intervenes or interferes, okay? So keep those two words fresh in your mind. All right, we need to distinguish between competition and competitors, okay? So lawyers and politicians and accountants will, will, will want to tell you that we need to protect from uh, one competitor knocking out all the rest. But keep in mind, a natural condition of the market is competition. When you start up a new market, say video games, all these businesses try their hand at it and some look successful and some are not based on you know uh, the, the engineering crew and the critical thinking the scientists whatever the all the, the entrepreneurial abilities of others to bring in to share in that market okay some people do better than others but the a natural condition of the market place is competition you're going to have coking Pepsi is a good example, okay? Coke entered the market and another entrepreneur said, hey, I think we can do that too. And then they entered the market and here comes Pepsi, here comes, you know, whatever. And so that's a, a, it's a natural condition. So to say that competition is negative, no, it's just a condition. It is what it is in the market. So keep that in mind. All right. Competition is what eliminates competitors. That is a natural condition. Like a natural, something natural is like a human being is going to end up falling asleep at some point or another. We don't have to think about walking because our natural condition puts the left and, and then the right and then the left. I mean, a natural condition of the market is competition. If you have competition, you're going to have competitors that drop out of the market. That's just the reality of it. Now, if you have three competitor, competitors in a competitive marketplace and two drop out, obviously the one that's left is a monopoly. Okay? And they can artificially raise their prices. But I have researched and I have only found less than 5% that have raised their prices. And we're going to go over this with detail if I continue making videos. But what I want to say to you is a lot of times when there is just the one competitor, the, the, the person that controls the market, it's only for a little while until other competitors come in. And you can say, well, how is that? Okay, just an example. This didn't really happen. But let's say Pepsi finally dropped out of the... Uh, the, the Soda business. Pepsi dropped out. Well, where's their plant and their employees? There's still a, excuse me, there's still a physical building there, okay? They're, the employees have just been laid off. Somebody else could come in and say, you know what? I know exactly what Pepsi did wrong. Let me go ahead and, and, and put, get these employees to come back. Let me buy this building. I'm going to change the name. I can do it better. So you have people dropping in and out of the market. Uh, it, it, that's a natural condition as well. Some people drop out. Some people uh, 
So when, when someone drops out, though, those employees in that physical plant still exist. You know, it would only take an entrepreneur to, a new, a new entrepreneur to come in and, and take over. And so a, a, a loan company uh, can have a monopoly for a little while. But is it in their best interest to um, to raise prices? Because eventually they're gonna there's gonna be competitors enter the marketplace again. If you put a bad taste in the consumer's mouth, watch out. They'll hurt you if there's a competitor. Okay, let's keep going. All right, getting to the first example of the A and P grocery chain. One of the first topics I read that pushed me and shifted me into. To do a more study and making a video. AMP grocery train. Now, I'm going to share with you the world market and then the United States market. Um, AMP grocery train, grocery chain was before Kroger and Publix and Walmart. Okay. It was the largest in the world. The world market. The AMP served more. They had a larger share than anyone else. And they were prosecuted under United States law for antitrust law uh, lawsuit. So, if I didn't tell you anything else, your mind would say, well, I understand. They, they were the largest in the world. The government wanted to intervene. You might want to use that word. But now let me tell you this. In just the United States market, grocery market, the A&P only had one fifth share of the U.S. market. So they were the largest retailer in the world, but they only, but four fifths of the retail, uh, grocery retails in the United States was, that was 80% of all of the grocery stores added together. Yet it was the U.S. government that prosecuted them and um, also, one, A&P was tried and convicted of being a monopoly in the U.S. Okay, and then I cite my sources in the description below. Highly interesting. So, I, when I heard that fact, I was like, whoa, wait a minute now. Let me check these sources. You know, you have to check them multiple and different ways and look at it and bend it and shift it in different ways. But then all of a sudden, I started picking up on patterns of other companies that was prosecuted in the same way. All right, so what did the government say? Or what did the competition say uh, against AP? They basically said, you're using your low prices as an unfair practice in the market. So the, to the consumer, we could care less. We want that lowest price and highest quality that we can get. Sometimes we're willing to pay the higher price for the higher quality, but if a company has proven they have high quality and low prices. Of course, that's what we want. Here is what the com competition said, and the U.S. government bought into it, that they were using unfair practices of lowering, uh, unfair practices of lowering their prices. So everybody, I had to cut the discussion off. I didn't want to, but YouTube only affords me 15 minutes per video. I hope you will join me then in the next episode as we continue talking about antitrust. In the next episode, I'll talk about why suppliers want to supply the big chains. Okay, why the uh, big chains get a discount for buying more product. Okay, and uh, when the government gets involved, the third party, is it an intervention or an interference? So this is what I want from you. I want you to like or dislike. A lot of people don't ask you to dislike. I need to know how you feel about me doing these videos. Also, too, from based on what you heard today, could you please at least type in one word in the comment section? Interference or intervention. If you think that the government... Um, prosecuting these big companies or an intervention or a um, interference. I would love it. I would appreciate it. And um, so one, one last thing. Listen, well, if you get, if you, I, I hope encourage you to 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 watch uh, future episodes. I'm going to continue to try to do this. It's probably four or five parts, and we finish up. Um, Discover is wonderful. Okay. You may type in intervention, interference right now. 
in your opinion. And you may see that it changes. Or it may stay the same. It may just solidify what you already believe. But listen, there's a dif difference between an intelligent man and a wisdom, a wise man. And that is a wise man, he listens, he reflects, he analyzes, he takes the gist of situations, he breaks it up. But mainly a wise man listens and what he reads and what other people says. An intelligent man knows a lot. Sometimes, not always, that intelligence leads to an arrogance to where they become opinionated no matter what they read, no matter what people say. And I encourage people not to be that way. Now, keep in mind, I don't mind someone believing in something and continuing to study and reflect and they, they keep up the same mindset. They solidify what they believe. That's fine. But lots of times, uh, think about it now, change cannot occur unless we are open to change. Now, in saying all that, that is by no means me sitting here on the platform saying, hey, I'm going to make you believe a certain way. No, I'm all for you believing if the government is interfering or if it's intervening. If it intervenes, it intervenes for the small business, for the we the people, okay? If it interferes, that means that it's acting as a third party and it's interfering with competition in a way that if it didn't interfere, the market would be a better place. We don't know that right now just from what we talked about. Got a lot more to say about the A&P, Mortensaw, Microsoft, Budweiser. I'm going to even bring other companies into this. Things that actually happened through history. And if you want me to talk about uh, uh, something uh, a little more than I did, like the A&P chain, ask me. I'll make a separate video on just the A&P story itself. It's, 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 it's amazing. And also, too, on another note, urban exploration, exploring abandoned places. I don't know where you are in the States. You may be in another country. But if you like to explore and you're responsible while you're exploring and you don't have anybody to do that with, contact me. Bert is not able to explore anymore, and so I am just itching to get out there and search for these uh, great historical behemoths of abandoned places. Thanks for watching.